All right, let's get started, everyone. Happy snow day. I've got Chris Somerville. Can you check, check your mic, Chris? Are you good? I think so. Awesome. Check one, too. All right. So we're going to talk about targeted marketing today and how to segment and be a market master. And I've got Chris here. So I'm going to role play a little bit with Chris to kick off the call. We're both in our home offices tonight enjoying the a nice uh, cold weather outside and warm inside type of thing and getting some good training today. So um, today, just kind of a couple housekeeping before I get started. If you do have questions after the call, we may not have time to get through all of the ideas or the scripts. So if you would like that information, you can shoot us an email and we'll be happy to follow up with you on that. Um, I am recording the call, so I better not watch what I say, Chris. Watch what you say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then um, we're going to go ahead with some questions for Chris, and then we'll talk about the marketplace. I'll open up. I got a little bit of background. There we go. Had a few little stragglers that came in after the call. All right, so we'll we'll go over some questions. Talk about how to segment, use the MLS, and I'll show you guys a few few things that I would do with an example. Uh, Chris is going to share with you guys some a tool that will be helpful to understand some of the macroeconomics by some good articles that you can pull right down from his website, um, and then we'll go from there. So let's welcome Chris. Thanks so much, Chris, for jumping on the call. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. So we're going to pretend, Chris, that you're a real estate broker. Uh, today. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions and then, you know, just go ahead and answer the questions to the best of your ability. So he, Chris is with WFG for those of you who don't know Chris, um, but he's going to be a real estate agent today just for the, <laughs> for the practice. Hey, I have been an agent though, so I have a oh. little practice. Well, that's good. How long has it been, Chris? Oh, it's been seven years since I was practicing. Okay. Well, this will take you back a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, um, what areas, you know, do you specifically work, have you worked in the past with your clients, specifically it, buyers? Uh, so this would be a geographic question as far yeah. as not a demographic. Okay. So ge ge geographically, I would say I try to focus on uh, the north end of Tacoma in okay. the Pierce County area. Um, okay. And I have also focused uh, some of my uh, time in kind of South King County where I'm seeing some of the contacts and clients kind of moving down from up north, but don't want to go as far south as to come. Okay. What kind of problems do you encounter most often in your transactions? I would say the, 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 once I'm under contract, it would be uh, agents that are not familiar with uh, how to transact. <laughs> that's, that's been one of my biggest challenges. Um, and also depending on if I'm working with buyers or sellers, buyers, obviously aren't as, uh, as challenging, but multiple offers have been, been an issue um, okay. or been a challenge. And, and with my sellers, it's been uh, maybe getting them to understand exactly um, that they need to understand and, and uh, listen to my advice and list for what the market will bear. Okay. Do you have repeat or close clients that work with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. What are some of the similar characteristics of your buyers? Do they want the same type of property? What, what are they looking for? Uh, I would say a lot of the similarity. Well, one of the similarities is they, they typically come from referral um, or I meet them at a broker's open or an open house. Um, okay. So they have a little bit of a uh, understanding about how I like to do business. So first and foremost, they like and want to do business with me. Um, and it is important for me to try to stick to what I know best. So I try to get out and see the different neighborhoods, know what's on the market and try to work as consistently as I can with the same style or demographic and geographical areas so I can serve them best. Okay, perfect. What kind of hobbies or things do your, t your clients typically like to do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting question. I've, I've got a lot of uh, clients that I work with that are interested in the arts. Um, um, you know, it's funny. We, I, I tend to have a way to kind of gravitate towards or people try to get, tend to gravitate towards me that are into the similar and same things that I'm into. 
Uh-huh. Um, I like motorcycles. I like golfing. I like getting outdoors. And, okay. uh, and I am a big appreciator of the arts. And so a lot of my clients, we find some common ground on that. Awesome. And how have you taken the time to segment your marketplace? I don't think so based on your first question when you answered it. Like, have you looked at how to get hyper local and really spend some time talking your buyer's language in terms of real estate? Uh, yeah, I think that I've tried to, I've tried to do that as best as possible by trying to, uh, be able to manage a couple different geographic areas. I okay. think the demo, the demographic, the demographic conversation is a little bit more specific to the way my clients like to work and like to do business. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are a couple of neighborhoods I mentioned, uh, like the Browns point area, which is out near uh, federal way, but it's still considered to be Tacoma. And yeah. then the North end of Tacoma are a couple of areas that if I am working with clients in those geographical areas, I will really try to make sure that I, um, capitalize on a sale or a purchase in those neighborhoods because I really do uh, want to focus my business more specifically in those areas. Okay, super. So those are some of the questions that you guys should be asking yourself if you're wondering, am I doing the right job? Am I targeting the right people? Am I focused on the right areas? If you have a hard time answering some of those questions or maybe you're too broad, when I, when I asked Chris, you know, what areas geographically and he's given me like he gave me like three or four different ones again this is role playing so there's a little bit of that but you really should have um, a few different areas pinpointed and be able to talk openly with anybody um, based on those geographic areas you should know a lot about those areas so let me jump into the next area of the conference call is what qualities is your buyers looking for in a real estate broker? And there are some important qualities that they look for. And I'm just gonna go down the list here. They look for credibility, which a lot of you guys are credible. I mean, that's how they know you. They know and like and trust Chris. So they've done business with him before. Um, They also are looking for a buyer's agent that's very knowledgeable about the geographic area. They're looking for experience. They're looking for personability. And they're looking for somebody that's very responsive so that they follow up. So those are all traits that you really should espouse when you're trying to build a good buyer's plan for, um, you know, showing homes and really connecting well with your buyers. The one that I want to spend the most time on today is the knowledge of the marketplace, because I feel like a lot of you on the call could use a bit more help in knowing how to become more knowledgeable about that segment of the market. Um, So we're going to talk about how to segment the marketplace and some of you maybe are too broad or too narrow. Hopefully by tonight's call, you'll be able to identify maybe where you should spend some time and money and effort into learning about certain segments of your marketplace and then focusing on those niches in a unique way. So what I would venture to guess is I've got an example we can talk about, Chris. So let's pretend that we're, we're, you tell me Tacoma, right? You just, you're really broad. I like Pierce County. I like Tacoma. You didn't really give me a, an area or a, or a locale to kind of focus in on, although you did. So <laughs> I play around a play, play as well as I wanted to tonight, but that's okay. So I've got a kind of a one up on the screen here. So this is a very challenging part of the market right now. The 98408 zip code. I've got one up on the screen. This is a listing that we've had and it went pending very quickly. Um, it was listed at 249. And so if you're not familiar with Tacoma, which many of you are not, you're from other areas of our service areas, you, you would kind of go, why is it pending so fast? You know, is it because of the price point? At what price point do things move really fast? So understanding where those segments would be in your, whether it be Tacoma or it be in Tukwila or it be up in Bellingham, it doesn't really matter the same uh, way you would segment works for any area or any zip code that we're going to talk about tonight. So when I'm looking at it, the the next thing I want to do is I've got this buyer, poor thing. She's, she's price of the market, Chris. She is out there. She's a single mom. She's been pre-approved with one of our preferred lenders and she's having a hard time finding um, a, a deal that will stick. And of course it's first time home buyer bracket, right? Where they, They have home, you know, the home advantage program, so they need down payment assistance. And so it's pretty tricky to find her a a home. And so we may have become too narrow, like we're only looking at 98408. We may need to go broader. And so 
to know kind of where to spend your time, you guys can go to InfoSparks, which is a graph system. I've got it pre-populated to save us time tonight, Chris. So what I've, did, what I've done is I put Tacoma, I put all of Pierce County, and then I put 98408, that specific zip code. So we could really compare, let's pretend like you were my client now, right? And we're looking at only residential homes and looking at the sales price. So what you wanna do when you're looking at this is look at all your price ranges first when you're looking at Tacoma or maybe you're looking broad with Pierce. Get this out of the way here. Let's see, I gotta minimize my, my little visual, there we go. Um, but what we've got here is all of, I go custom or I've got price ranges. I went ahead and put in the custom ranges, but from all of the areas we wanna search and we wanna service, we wanna look at that price segmentation. But how I came up with these segments is I looked at the all price ranges and I looked at Pierce County specifically. And you can see Pierce County median sales price, so I've got median right here, is 345. And in Tacoma, generally it's 300. So you can see that my price segment probably needs to be set up like this. That's how I determined how to segment my market. Was I want the fast moving stuff, which is the 255 or less. I want the next segment, which is 256 to 351 roughly, 351 to 550 and then 551 or more. And I customized, I clicked on custom and made my segments. I didn't rely on the computer to do that. I customized it. And then I can look at my graph and it can be more strategic and, and, um, and look at it in a way and explain it to my people uh, better than if I was to just let the system calculate it myself right here. So I'm looking at median price. I've segmented my, my price ranges. I'm really interested in this, this 255 or less because of that one client that we have looking and things are going, I, mean, I think we're on our fourth or fifth offer right now, Chris. It's pretty sad yeah. that we can't get her a house. So when we look at this, we can see some interesting trends here. If we open ourselves up to Pierce County, look in January, the orange line is Pierce. We might have more opportunity if we're not so focused on the 98408 zip code and we open ourselves up to all of Pierce County. Maybe we even open ourselves up to Thurston County um, to find what she's looking for. Um, so having much more of a broader um, type of niche would be better with this particular price point issue that we're dealing with. Now we can go to months of supply and we can see what's happening with the months of supply. It's fall, fell in, it's all the way down here below half of my, it's gone in, in the first day it's on the market. Notice there's a little bit of relief in this price range, but having closing costs, we're definitely putting closing costs to the top of the price in order for sellers to be willing to pay them. Um, and we're probably gonna have to waive inspections. We're gonna have to do these types of things in order to secure her a property because it is fast moving in all of Tacoma, all of the zip code and all of Pierce County right now in the months of supply. If we move over to days on market, and again, it's well below 30 days. So some of the scripts that I used that I'll be using at the end of the call will have, you know, you can definitely use one of the scripts things are fast moving all over Pierce County right now under that price range. Now, if we change the price range, we click on this, let's see if it's the same in this price range. Are things staying on the market? Yes, all over Pierce County, all over Tacoma, all over 98408. We are under, we're definitely under 20 days right now for days on market. Let's go to the next price bracket, 350 to 550 and see if that changes. Well, it changes things a little bit. So if you're talking with a luxury higher end home, you're not going to, going to want to tell them that, but still it looks like we're below 35 days in Pierce. Still really, um, really favorable right now for sellers. And then in 550 or more, you can see the, the trend line on this one. Notice 98408, we don't have homes in 98408 that's over <laughs> But all over Pierce County, you can see that we are looking at 47 or 59 days on the market. Tacoma, very favorable, probably because of the North End, um, we're at 47 days uh, with 550 or more. So it's a great way to kind of, in an essence, talk to the different price segments. I'm looking at only residential homes. I'm looking at sales price, median sales price days on market, and months of supply. Those are the three I want you guys to spend some time with this week. 
understanding how the graphs and how it relates. You can see the months of supply here. Um, I'm in the higher end bracket still. Notice that the higher end market, we are more in a balanced market than we are in a buyer's market or a seller's market. It's much more of a balanced market. Anything between four and six months would be more of a balanced market for residential real estate. So with that, we know how to, how we can stay, you know, if we go stay entry level, I mean, now when I'm talking about entry level, I can really talk about how quickly, how much more strategic we need to be with our offers, that maybe we need to open ourselves up to wider, a wider area by showing some of these graphs. I can show these very easily by clicking on the share button. I can embed this in social media. I can make a PDF really easily from, um, from this page right here. So I can show my clients or I can print it out for my appointment. But you can, you can see whether you're too broad or you're too narrow, even by opening yourself up and showing this on the grid. Okay, you can kind of see the price. The orange line is Pierce. Mm -hmm. That gives us a little bit of relief by staying with 98408, it's gonna be a lot longer of a process than if we were to, to open ourselves up to a wider, wider area. Um, a lot of people ask me when we're talking about market segmenting, when I look at months of supply, they're also looking for absorption rate. Um, and that's a, a calculation you can do based on the, the pending sales. And it's a division that, equation that you do, but the absorption rate is very similar to the inventory in so much that you may want to focus on inventory and learn how the inventory affects the marketplace and the pending sales. But that's what absorption rate is really focused on, is looking at that, what is available and what is pending. Um, so with, the, with this kind of knowledge, you have the ability to do this very easily, share it with your client, but then it comes down to what other resources do you guys have available to you? And I'm going to turn it over to Chris real quick to explain the NAR report. I don't have a visual, um, but if you could explain that, Chris, that would be great. So the NAR report and, 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 and what? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, just the, the NAR report. Like, uh, I think you have like a one pager that if you call the title company. They call it the NAR report now. I can't remember. Oh, it's are we are we talking about the property profile like on the trio? Yeah. Then is that what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, well, it's just gonna now the NAR report is gonna come out, or it's gonna be part of a trio. When you open title, it's gonna be the first thing that comes out. So it's gonna be a property profile. It's it's gonna give all of the if we're talking about the same report, it's gonna talk about all the recents and all the uh, you know recent sales within a particular neighborhood. Give some. Uh, is that it right there? Yeah, uh, I don't think this is, I've got you geared up for the WFG's uh, national oh, title, but no, I don't you. have, I wish gotcha. I had a page <laughs> set up, but it does talk about, so it's going to show much more broad, is that right, Chris? Yes, it's more broad, but it's still statistically based, and so it's, it's going to be good information for them if they've got a particular, now that's going to come on behest of a request on a listing, so that's going to be more kind of geared towards if you're on the selling side, but we have... Uh, we have some different reports that we can provide if you're trying to look at like trends, market trends, things like that within a specific zip code or uh, demographic area. We can drop a pin and just kind of look at the collective information around a particular neighborhood okay. or also look in a, in a zip code specifically or a, a region or an area or even a city. So there's a lot of different variations of what we can use that for, but it's great information for when you're trying to leverage um, and discuss with your clients what their options are. Mm -hmm. um, and be able to deliver that message in an educated way and then have some things statistically to back up that conversation. So you'd be able to tell me absorption rates and whether there's a lot of sales in a specific area, right? Yeah, yeah. It would go right, right along with the stuff that you were just discussing and the stuff that you were, you were showing on the screen, which I think I love that system that you were in there uh, previously, that InfoSpark. That's a, that's a great system, and that gives you a lot of ability to be able to talk with your clients uh, about being realistic about where they're looking and how much they're wanting to spend. And then it also lets a broker know exactly how well they need to be positioned when they go in to make an offer because it's a very, especially in that demographic yeah. that you just showed is a very competitive market. So this would be a competitive advantage by getting some reports and kind of looking to see what's available in a particular area. And mm -hmm. then, and then that use that to your advantage. Okay. So I've got you up. So we're running close on at the hour. It goes by fast, doesn't it, Chris? 
I've got it does. It flies by. But I was so enthralled with what you were talking about. <laughs> I was. I was like, I'm getting relicensed. I'm coming to work for Rochelle. I mean, that was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, no, what I've got on this screen now is very unique to WFG, and I use this quite a bit. Um, I love Inman News. You guys are familiar. You'd have to pay for Inman News, but because we have a relationship with WFG, you can get access to Inman News for free. You just have to, I think you have to sign up with Chris. So if I if I got this up correctly, Chris, I'm, I'm in. But yes, I would have you are. To first wouldn't I so let yeah me show everybody on the on the call tonight how to do this so if I yeah, go to so, go ahead national dot wfg national title dot com is that where I go yeah yeah that's where you go or they can just go right in they just can type in wfg national title they want to go to our national site because we have sites for each one of our different regions or okay. different areas we've even one for Tacoma we are you know Tacoma we've got one for Seattle Bellevue for instance uh, Snohomish County so there you are on our national site and then if you just scroll down I mean you may may or may want to log in or log out but in and on that is going to be where you're going to find the Inman content uh, now Inman's award-winning uh, cutting-edge technology it's an educational it's very complimentary to your business this is a great place to go find content to post on your websites or to your facebook business pages things like that as well as just keeping you up on all the trends that are going on so in order to be able to register for this which is normally about 200 dollars a year for a subscription we'll mm -hmm. provide this to you for free you just click on any article so for those of you that are on the call right now that haven't done this you just go to this website our website and you click on any article um, and once you click on that article it's going to ask you if you want once it's going to come up and then if you slide down and because you're probably already registered in here it's gonna it will yeah, say I, would I, you like to yeah. right here, would you like to log yeah, would you like to read more um, and so what's really neat about this and just is you can create your own username and password it's not real complicated to do so all you need to do on the first uh, attempt is it'll ask you if you want to read more it'll ask you to register we don't mark it to you they don't use it for any other reason they will get your email address so they can send you a summarization of the top articles every week so every Friday if you haven't had a chance to go up on there during the week but you like the content every Friday they will send out like a best of or a greatest hits so that's the only stuff that you're really going to be receiving from Inman so this is a really great resource it's normally you know a couple hundred dollars a year to do it and you know a lot of top brokers it's great for content and just a place to go and stay up on what's going on in different markets uh, locally nationally and globally yeah, this is great. Um, and I've been able to post different things. So here's one right here. It says log in or sign up. So I click on sign up. I put my name, my company, my yep. email address. That's it. It's pretty easy. And you, yeah. And you can also share these articles off of Inman directly to like a Facebook business page or to social media. So if you find something like that article you have pulled up right there, if you found like this would be pertinent, yeah. um, pertinent information, you can just go ahead and post that directly along with a comment. Uh, from Inman. So it's not like copywritten uh, content that you can't use. They they suggest you go ahead and leverage this within your business. So great stuff to send. You know, you can send and directly forward it to a client right from the Inman site to a client. If you've got an investor, or if you've got some folks that, you know, where you find some information that you might think is going to be valuable to them. Like, and I, I forgot my password, Chris. So it just, it sends me an email and then I just go back in. It locks yeah. me right in. So it's pretty pretty easy easy to use I love the weekly updates every because I kind of get highlights of what's going on and then I don't have to dig in or I may want to dig in and, and share it but it's it's really a nice little system love Inman I think that they do a great job of collecting the data um, and it's real time as real time as you can get a pulse of the industry yeah. you see the pictures here's the Inman conference that they just had so yeah, pretty it's cool. a pre it's a yeah it's a preeminent a place for for real estate information that's it's kind of known as the gold standard for that so um there's definitely content on there that's going to be um worth it's going to be worth anybody taking the time to at least go in register and uh, if nothing else just kind of uh perusing through the weekly updates that come out on friday cool awesome so a couple takeaways for the call i told you i don't know if i have time but it looks like i do i have a few minutes to wrap it up um so key three <laughs> Three key takeaways from tonight's call is find a way to create and send a report to your clients on a regular basis. Make that one of your goals this year, um, either monthly or quarterly to stay top of mind. And we have plenty of resources. You know, Chris is providing some. I know other title companies have provided you guys with plenty of opportunities. 
I think it's the smart real estate agents that actually take it seriously and actually put something together and they and they they win I mean they get a lot of clients over the year that oh you kept sending me you know information about the marketplace and it does stay on top of mind um, so send that to all of your database on a regular basis this year the other takeaway I would say is consider sending a save search from the MLS the MLS has made changes to their hot sheets in the last 12 months and it's much user friendly for the client. So maybe consider setting, setting a save search from the MLS and sending those new listings that pop up in their neighborhood or in a specific segment of the neighborhood that you guys are watching or, or participating in, setting that, that up, explaining that to your client that they'll be automatically getting listings that fit their criteria and start to prospect in that fashion this year. That's one thing uh, Cheryl brought up last week with you guys is she sets those up on a regular basis for her clients and personally contacts them in regards to their save search, their hot sheet. And then the third thing I would say to do this year would be to create a flyer or use a service. House Sender um, it does a great job of creating this flyer with statistics about the specific area and then make sure you include a call to action at the bottom. Some sort of you know, give me a call with your number or your contact information very prominent if you have questions about this report. I posted something on social media. I wasn't even trying to get clients and I got three or four. <laughs> so I know it works if you provide a call to action or you provide relevant statistics about an area or a neighborhood that's that your clients find valuable. Um, some scripts I told you guys I'd share. Um, one of the scripts I loved that I used, and I, it still works today, is talking to your clients. I said, some people don't realize that their neighborhood, neighborhood is a hot market. So you may want to try some of these types of, of things with your clients. I would write, literally I would write this on a postcard or a mail out. As you can see from the current market report attached, the on in Tacoma, in South Tacoma, in the 98408, be as specific or hyper local as you can get so that it doesn't sound too canned. So as you can see from the current market report attached in the blank area, homes are selling for blank more than they were listed and we are seeing even rising prices in certain areas. This type of pricing is an opportunity for you to buy a home today and have it increase in value by next year. When would you like to discuss this more in detail? So again, I've used that script in multiple times. In fact, I used it with, gosh, I don't even get my hair done with um, this, this hairstylist. I actually take, it's like a neighbor, like a long, long time ago, she cuts hair out of her house and I got a really good deal for my kids to get their hair cut. And I was talking with her about the market and the housing and saw me post on social media. I used that script on her and I already wrote up a duplex last, last week for her um, on, on this complete, this is, a, this is something I just used last weekend. And we went out and found a duplex. She wrote up an offer and we're under contract right now in a duplex that she's looking for a second home on. So it works. I know it works because I've used it many times on people. The other one I've used is have you had have you have you had someone in that you know tell you that if your home is in great condition and in a super really good location that homes will only last on the market less than 30 days. And in Tacoma in pretty much for any price range uh, you're going to see your the homes are selling for more than what they're asking for and definitely within less than 30 days. So you can get very specific and hyper local talking about the speed and how, how you market things and how you get things done because the market is in your favor, uh, specifically in some of these areas we offer, we service. So that's all I've got. Chris, do you have anything else to share with the group? No, no, I just appreciate the opportunity to come on and and, uh, and talk. And if anybody needs a market trend report or anything just like the report that we were discussing, please, they can just reach out to me and be more than happy to provide them with that information. Um, if you have trouble getting on Inman, this is great stuff, you guys. Yeah. So anybody that has any questions, you know, can feel free to uh, reach out to me more than happy to, to help you with that or anything else in your business too as well. So just appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. I always learn something when I come on. So
Yes. Uh, Chris? Yeah. Are you still there? So what's your I, last name? I'm trying to sign up on the uh, WFC uh, tools register. And are they yeah. asking for the sales represent? Somerville. S-O-M-M-E-R-V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Find me. Okay, cool. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. This is my first time to go be the web, uh, webinar with you guys. Oh, yeah. good. I great information. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. Have a great week, good. Yeah. Okay. You too. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye.